Evening everyone, how are you all doing? Mark, gentlemen with Turner here. Welcome to my workshop. Welcome to my Monday Night Live. Hope you're all keeping well. Got a lot of projects on the go, keeping productive and making lots of things. Uh, helping me out tonight, I've got a couple of esteemed deer worms. My God, got that was a shock. <laughs> Reprobates, maybe. <laughs> I, well, I thought about saying that. Oh, here he is. Look, late as ever. Oh. Late as usual. The, the, Sorry, come through the hole in the bottom. No. Well, we've got you, Wayne you, Turner, Ryan at Hardwood Turning, and Steve, I'm always late from SK Crafts. My head said yeah. decided to watch your update. That was all. Calm down. Don't panic, Mr. Mannerin. No. <laughs> the, only, the, only, the only reason he's late is because he dropped something. No, that was earlier. That was earlier. <laughs> right. right. So, they're going to keep you guys. Um, well, they're going to keep me informed. They're going to keep you entertained. And they're going to ask me any questions that you guys have got. Uh, bit of a fun one tonight. So I'll put these guys in the background and I'll go over <laughs> and uh, change to the overhead. So, piece of wood on the, the lathe. Not sure what it is. It's got some spalting in it, which says to me it could be beach, but it doesn't feel like beach. It doesn't, it's not heavy like beach is. Um, so if anybody knows, as I turn it, feel free to make suggestions. It the is plan, exceptionally dry though, isn't it, Mark? It's very, very dry. It's been cut and stored for at least 15 years. Um, but the plan tonight is to make a candle box I was just explaining this to the guys. Uh, candle box. It's like an ordinary box, but it's got a candle inside. So it sits on your side with the lid on. Just looks like a pretty box. And when you want to make the room smell nice or be all romantic for that special person, take the lid off, light the candle, Bernie, Bernie. When you finish Bernie, Bernie, blow the candle out, put the lid back on. Just looks like a, a box again. So that's the plan. So we're going to divide this into two pieces, hollow out the inside to this shape, this size, put some shape on it, do some mortises and tenons and hollowing and shaping and spinny, spinny, lots of shavings, and we'll go from there. So that's it, really. Thanks for coming. Bye, everyone. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I, Thank you more, Mark. Thanks I, for that. I've kind of rounded this down. It's still got a little bit of wobble on it, a uh, bit of bark on this side here. I've put it in a put a tenon on the end, and it's gripped in my C jaws on my chuck. I need to put a tenon on this end, and then divide it down. So I'll get on with that, and I'll let you guys uh, get started. I'll just put my safety glasses on, okay. and I'm running the lathe at about 1,200 revs. Right, so at the moment we've got Barry Chitty in, Colin Izzard's in, uh, Malcolm Douglas, Lawrence Bagasia, uh, Ruby's in, uh, Peter Corcoran, I don't know he said, Wood Wizardry by Colin, John S. I'm just going down the list here. Barry's in the shed, Andy Lenethley. Uh, Lewis is in. Chris Nunn, Nick Castle. Chat's just stopped. I'll wait for it catching up. Right. Oh, it's going all the way at the bottom now. It does that, doesn't it? It does. It, just, it does. It disappears just. Um, doors in I've probably passed some, some people here um, John N Trevor P uh, Gary Letizier Jason Wheeler Robert Dolman Chris Nunn Brenda's in Don McKee Douglas Mungham Steve Ellis, 
Um, Steve SK Crafts has escaped. Uh, Donna's in. Hiya, Donna. Donna, love angel. Uh, Gamut 3D. Hey, Jay. Name, that's Jay. That's Brenda's son. All right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was in last week. Uh, Henry Morgan. Ian from IDR. Yeah, uh, Rob CP's up. in. Hey, Rob. Scott's in. So you can see some of the spot in a bit better now that I've got rid of the bark. So it's a pretty piece of wood. Right, so parting tool. And I'll put a tenon on the end. And I think that's about everybody. Uh, I apologise to anybody I've missed. We have 59 watching. So remember, folks, if you've got a question for Mark at any time, just stick it in the chat and we'll try and ask it for him. Jennifer's in. Hi, Jennifer. Good evening, Jennifer. Good evening, everyone in the chat. <clears throat> at the moment, everybody's just saying hello to each other. This is the thing. Rapid typing on the on the keypads, trying to get everybody's name in. Trying not to forget anybody. Right, so we want to divide this up two thirds to a third, I think. So let's have to get back there, I think. It's the wood turner's golden ratio almost. Two thirds to one third. It's almost the actual golden ratio. Mm -hmm. It is. Almost, not quite. Just make a little relief cut. Because you don't want your parting tool to bind up. Sorry, it's going to bleach out a bit, people. But oh, you need to be able to see, Mark. So we've got seventy people watching now. That was a quick jump. Hello, dear. We've got Matthew Gallagher just come in. Hi, Matt. He is having some internet trouble at the minute, so he might be dropping in and out. <coughs> Just drop the pressure off the tailstock. Good old littles. Push saw, pull saw. Perfect. I have one as well. I just uh, I did the same thing yeah yesterday and got the thing stuck in the middle <laughs> yeah. because uh, because I forgot to take the pressure off the tailstock. <laughs> right now, when I do boxes, there's there's a couple of ways you can do them. You can do the bottom first, um, or you can do the lid first. Now I tend to do just because of the way my brain works, I tend to do the bottoms first, and I. With this one, I'm going to have the tenon part of the lid on the base and the mortise part of the lid 
uh, the tenon part of the base on the base that makes sense and the mortise part on the lid so the lid fits over the raised lip okay does that make sense I don't yep. know. We'll, we'll, you'll see as i go right so, so Doug, douglas is asking me if the thin part and tools are okay for a newbie yeah all you've got to do is make sure you give yourself some clearance when you're doing the part and cut uh, Chris Glanville's in, Philip Bates, evening everybody, newbie just joined in. Good evening, Philip. Good Welcome. Evening, Philip. Welcome, oh, Philip. Right. Uh, Woodward Paul's just come in. Uh, Chisky's in. Donna's asking, how everybody, Don, Donna's asking how everybody is. Very Good. well, thank you, Donna. So I've got to ask, what's River Birch? Yeah. Chris has got a new load of river birch and red cedar. Well, I've had a red cedar. Maybe Chris could explain that to us. Or somebody else in the chat. Go and have a look on the wood database. See if it mentions it on there. Right, so I'm just going to face off the end. Now, I'm not started putting any shape on the outside yet. I want to define the, the size of the, uh, the bit I'm going to hollow out. And that'll sort of then let me know how much, how much uh, space I've got to play with. Now, on this is the width of the candle with the glass. So that's the, the external size of the glass. So I'll mark this to give me an idea how much room I've got. So if I start the lathe and then lean on the stop button. Wood dudes in. Hey, Stephen. Don't touch the left side. Mm. Otherwise, otherwise it'll flip up and you might have an accident. Yes, that was rather fortunate. Go to that one. See if you guys can still see. Try that one, that's a bit better. Well, there's nothing comes up in the wood database for rubber bark, I'm afraid. All yeah. right, okay. There is, I found it. Did you? Yeah. Have you? Yeah, river birch. Oh, um, no, Eastern, United, yeah. Eastern United States it says color apparent heartwood tends to be a light reddish brown with nearly white sap wood. Occasionally, figured pea star available with a wide shallow curl similar to a hmm. cherry. Which, uh, did you just uh, Google the wood database there? Um, yeah, yeah, they didn't search typed in river birch. Yeah, that's why then. And it comes up with no item found. Oh. Jeez. Weird. Yeah, I'll put the I'll put the link in the chat and then you can yeah. read it. Good man, that'll be good. Thank you. Oh. Ian just informed me it's snowing. Snow angels in the morning. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'm using a spindle couch. I'm back hollowing. So on center, you go in parallel with the flute at about 11 o'clock. Press in and then 
swing the handle away from you. Drives the point, and it's just back all over the blade with the, the bottom wing, the left hand wing. Right, Robert Stewart's just come in, as has Kevin Howell and David Nickel. And Chisky has said, I think he's referring to the river birch. It's a fantastic wood to turn. It has beautiful grain patterns. Jigsy's in. Evening, Jigsy. Hi, Jigsy. So that's that's a different wood, wood database than the one I looked up. I don't know how that is. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Because the wood database I looked up has uh, Trada or something on it as well. Wood database Trada. I don't know, no, no, it's, it's, it's the, the wood database. I think it's called wood, the wood database.com. I think that's, that's what it's called. I, it is now, yeah. That's the one I just looked at, the one Steve. Um, oh, we've got 84 watching now, guys. Wow, thank you, thank you ever so much. That's going to fit in there perfect. So I know that's going to fit. So, Steve Ellis has said that uh, river birch can be bought here in the UK to plant. Ooh. There you go, Brian. You like planting trees? I absolutely do. I am going to plant a few of them. I wonder, with, with the name river birch, is it, is it a bit like willow? It likes to have damp conditions under its feet. I'm not sure. See if it gives any information on the database. Uh, uh, just, I will look that up and then I will go to the um, my local uh, tree supplier and see can he get me some. Well, Jane bought a couple of half barrels uh, today. One to use for a water feature and another one is a planter and they're absolutely massive. <laughs> um, and the guy who sold them, he delivered them because they couldn't fit in the car. That's how big they are. <laughs> yeah. um, he, um, he, he does uh, firewood for a bit of a business, kiln-dried hardwoods. So I said, have you got any burrs? And he said, funnily enough, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going across next week to have a look yep I did the same thing with a local guy here um, he does the same thing Collins I firewood um, and he has he has just piles and piles of trees lying in a four acre field yep um, so I, he says if you want come over any time with your chainsaw and just cut them bits off if you want the trouble is, to people who are selling it as firewood, that's just firewood, isn't it? That's nothing more than that. Yeah. And I, I didn't Thank want to you, tell him. Was, we, we were having a chat. And he is thinking about buying a, a, a portable bandsaw mill and getting some of it planked to sell as planks. Mm, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what happens. As soon as they find out there's money money to be made through the wood panels, the price goes up. Exactly. Keith has just joined. Evening, Keith. Evening, right, Keith. there's a couple. Uh, Steve Ellis has said, "Where should I plant the river birch tree? Choose a planting site that receives full to partial sun, preferably in the morning hours. River birch needs cool, moist soil. Afternoon oh, yeah. shade helps maintain cooler soil. So a site on the east or north of a house uh, uh, or building works best." Well, Brian lives in Ireland, so you don't have no problem with moisture. Yeah, not really, no. Yeah. <laughs> unless I plant on the top of a hill somewhere. <laughs> but I've actually got a, 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 the perfect spot for that, um, just at the bottom of a little rise, um, where there's a damp area that I need to get some trees in. Or having right. some of them. Oh, Mike's in. Hiya, Mike. Hi, Mike. Hello, uh, Mike. Sorry, because I guilted him into it. Mr. Walsh. How are you doing, Mr. Walsh? Thank you for coming along. Uh, you've come here to learn anything, Mike. You've come to the wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> Poor old Mark. <laughs> Circular wood by Keith is in. Hi, Keith. 
So, Mike, if you have a look at the, uh, I know why Mike's here. See, Mike, if you have a look at the top of the chat, mate, that's how you do it. All right. Right, Douglas has said he watched, um, I think it's Zillard on YouTube today, uh, and he's got a nine-ton cedar lemon trunk, and the rest of the re rest of the tree delivered. So Steve is telling us that this uh, the um, rubber cedar or rubber birch grows 12 to 13 to 24 inches a year. It must be Ooh. closely related to willow, I doubt. Because it likes the same conditions and it grows it's, just as fast. It's going to be a pretty open grain then, if it's growing that fast. Yeah, you would think. I don't need that height, so... Mike said he's here to see you, Mark, not drink coffee. Oh, thank you, Mike. Contractually obliged to say that, see? <laughs> Bailey Woodworks has just joined home. Cool. Evening. That's going to be close. Hey, Bailey. Close. <clears throat> And Steve's also said, when it's mature, again referring to the river birch, it's got a, it can have a one meter diameter trunk and up to a hundred feet tall. Oh, yeah. See how I like people like Steve. He doesn't just work in millimeters and meters and things like this. He puts feet in as well. <laughs> uh, meters and feet in the same sentence. Very good. Yeah, I love it. yeah, I like that as well. I do that all the time. <laughs> Multitasking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Matthew is apologising that he is actually yeah. back in. <laughs> he must have his internet going again. Now, Steve's saying he's multilingual. Yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's something else. <laughs> Design and mix then. Good evening. Evening, James. 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 Uh, James. Greg, uh, yeah. Greg, Greg Alexander. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say, Steve. <laughs> Greg Alexander has just joined as well. We'll get it in there somewhere in the line. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just bringing these teeth in for somebody. Don't worry about it. <laughs> well, Steve, uh, make, sure, make sure you give them back, though, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> Steve Fleming has joined too. Hi, Steve. <laughs> yeah, Steve. I, I have a horse could do with those teeth, Wayne. <laughs> 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 yeah. That is where the graduated scale on the top of your quill on your tailstock comes in very handy. Blah blah Cause... blah 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you not got one, mate? Have you not got one on your four hundred six? No, I'm, I've got I've got a cheap lathe, Mark. Have you Yeah, yes, yes I have it. it, it it's a cheap lathe. Yeah. But the little brother of this one. The, the earworms are We're almost related. Right? Yeah. James, um, Mark's turning a pot for a candle. And Mark's. it's going to have a lid. Yes. It's uh, going to be. It's a candle. As you can see. Box. Yeah, that's close. Left. <laughs> it's close. Ooh, yeah. It's close, Mark. Yeah. You'll have I'll to finish the lid a little bit. You know, it might have been a good idea, rather than doing the two-to-one measurement for the box and the, the lid. It might, the have, yeah. Yeah, it might have been a good idea. <laughs> just, just seeing. Have you, have you got another bit, Mark? Perhaps you should have done it in quarters. <laughs> Three quarters to it. <laughs> It'll be fine. Don't worry. Mark, Not do you know what? You're, you're showing the good creations show. has come in. You're starting to show symptoms what I show. You're sort of winging it. Yeah. Could, could, yeah. it be a, could it be a danger of an SKF coming here? <laughs> it could well be. Oh, I wish. <laughs> yeah, still trying to drop it. You just want the pressure off, don't you? You might, you might do both. You might funnel and drop it. <laughs> but Steve, the piece, the piece I did at lunchtime, I dropped it both four times. I know, mate. I see. I was in the background. I was watching. <laughs> Thank you. 
But Mark's cleaned his flawless, so he ain't got the shavings to catch you like you had this morning. Right, today. that's true. That's true. You're, you're okay, Mark, because Mike's sticking up to you here. He said, don't let them get you down, Pike. Yeah, <laughs> don't tell me your name, tell me your name Pike. <laughs> Pike is standing up for you there. He says, don't let them get you down, Pike. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Mannering. Mm -hmm. Good one, Paul says. Funnel club coming up. Get ready to duck. Mm -hmm. I have every confidence in Mark. It will be grand. Is that the Did hollowing like tool I was talking to you the other night, Mark? About? Oh, that one? Yeah. Uh, no, you were talking to me. This is a tender oh, one. Yeah, you were talking to me about both of them, I think. Yeah. Is that one? Yeah, the 10 mil one. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, that one will go in the blue or the gold. And that one will go in the red with the grub screws or the blue quick release. The Swiss grip. Right. Oh, I need to get some of these fancy quick release tools. Yeah, yeah well, you, you could have. Well, I don't, I don't really need to, but I want to. You can you can buy the one handle with the with the three uh, twist grips, the, the gold, the blue, and the red. I, I, I think I looked at that yesterday. Yeah. It's not that overly expensive either. Jixi's got a go. See you later, bud. See you, Jixi. See you, Jixi. I don't know why t YouTubers like the block that from Lauren. Yeah. See you. Uh, you so could like be. I know people are probably thinking, oh, bloody hell, he's just hollowing out again. Boring old hollowing out. No, but no, no, nobody in the chat mentioned it whatsoever, Mark. That's just in your head. They're all just waiting for you to go through the bottom of that. That's all they're waiting for. That's yeah. That's And you've got 91 watching. Oh, my life, really. Considering that uh, Wood Tunnel 360 is on the net tonight as well. Mm. It's a live demo. Don't, don't tell them that, that'll leave. No, they won't. I can have two well, windows open. open. Well, the only thing to remember is that we're 360. Right, let's have a look. Let's have a look. See how far this candle sits down inside. Yeah, calling from Wood Wizardry um, says that he bought that nice handle with the three different uh, sizes Excellent. and they fit his cheap carbides. Yep. Yeah, I did buy a set of, with the three grommets. Speaking of which, that's what I'm about to use now. What, cheap carbide? Yeah. Just to get a straight mm. plunge. Not that carbide. <laughs> Here, Jamie, when you need them. Mm -hmm. You can't wood's dry, how that's all spreading out. Huh? Well, not spreading, but just dust. Might have to put this in a longer handle. Bear with me a second, folks. That sounds okay. like a plan. Did you see it jumping? Yep. Yeah. Ah, oh, the beauty of having removable. I just just don't see why you need twenty five of them though. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the what's the okay. ratio? What's the av what's the safe ratio for every inch over the over the rest? I think it's oh, I've got no every, idea. I think it's for every inch over the front of the rest, you need four inches behind the rest. Right, okay. All right, okay. So uh, Mike's got to go. So he's got to go. See you later, Mike. Have a good night. See, See you later, mate. Mike. Thanks for coming in, mate. And Douglas is asking, Mark, have you been adding to your log burner, pal? Don't mention log burner. Yeah, don't mention log burner. Oh, we cry. Just put him in timeout. 
<laughs> Have you got rid of your DIY bowl yet? Yeah, I'm out rid of that you? because... Because, you know, there's a fire hazard. Yeah, I agree. Copper, uh, our wood turner's turn is uh, just come in. Hi. Evening. Hey, Copper. Is, Bri- is Brian in the chat? Is he Brian still there or is he gone? No, oh, Brian's still here. There's a comment there for you, man, from John Scarborough. Seen that. Thanks, John. John Scarborough just said, uh, I had a go at Nordic Goblet you did a couple of weeks ago. And I'm quite happy with the results. Stick some pictures up, pictures up, John. We'll have a look at it. Mm, Excellent. I've inspired somebody. Yay! <laughs> That'll be a first. Nice when that happens. Doesn't it? Terry from TJ Turning is saying hello again. He's just back to the computer. Hello. John's asking, where can I put pictures up? Uh, any of them? Well, are you a member of any of the wood turning groups on yeah. Facebook? Beginners wood turning. Or, 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 or your, your, own, your own Facebook? Um, have you got Instagram? Look at Great. That. Oh. That's, that's, that's made for the job. You, you Perfect, almost you think somebody had planned that. Yeah, almost. <laughs> right. Uh, so, Grit and Sheen's another good place you could put a post up, John. Yeah. There's lots of uh, wood UK Wood turn in UK is another one. Oh, I don't use them. No, they get a bit stroppy if you post your own channel, don't they? They do that, yeah. They just get struck with all the time. I've, 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 been the, there, uh, I've been them years ago. Extractor on. Sorry, it's going to get a bit noisy, folks. I think that's actually, I think, John, is that the one I commented on last night? There you mention it. Let me see if that's the one I commented on last night. Mark, Andy's just said, Andy's just said, a hole in the bottom will be useful for pushing the finished candle out. Sorry, say that again. uh, Andy has said, a hole in the bottom will be useful for pushing the finished candle out. <laughs> yeah, could be. Could be, yeah. Design. It's all part of the design, see? Not as green as I'm cabbage looking. So, <laughs> L- Lewis is asking, is water birch and river birch the same thing in the database? So, I'm there checking. Don't put the extractor back on. And Wood Wizardry by Cullen says, it looks like Mark's got the same red arm infection that Steve has. Need to get a vacuum, Mark. Definitely. Got a vacuum right behind me. Well, 
Okay, Why don't you one. use it? It's not plugged in. <laughs> Shut up. That's a wonderful excuse. I'll be short of sockets, Mark. Not a crack. Right, Lewis, I can't find water birch on the database. Right. I don't think that's a crack. I think that's sporting. So whether that's just a different name for it, I'm not 100% sure, mate. Okay, so let's put a little bit of shape on this. Doug Miller's just joined. Hi, Doug. Evening, Doug. Lewis, do you want to? Oh, sorry, Brian, you've got the hand. Do you want to put the the links in for yours in Lewis's premiere? Just, just, uh, just as you speak, when I'm just doing that. See, great minds. So there's there's the uh, there's the link for my premiere, which is coming up at uh, nine forty-five this evening. And Lewis is following me, and I'll just pop that in now, just in two seconds. You've been going half an hour, Mark. Thank you. Just, just over it. Right, this camera is starting to get a, just once in a while, starting to do a glitch. Okay, I just saw it. Yeah. Okay. Try that for a minute, sorry. And there's Lewis's. So YouTube doesn't like the word Nigra either. When no, Steve I know. just typed that in. It just didn't like it in anyway. Yeah, absolutely. It's a Latin name for a tree. Then Lewis has said that Mike referred to me as a speed turner last night and it made him laugh. <laughs> Steve Ash has just joined. Hi, Steve. Hey, Steve. Hey, hey Steve. So, guys, if you like what Marv's doing, make sure you give him a thumbs up. Oh, there it is. It's over, it's, over, it's over there, Mark. Yeah. It's behind you. Oh, Adrian. Hi, Adrian. Hi, oh, evening, Adrian. Just keep seeing that water birch is different from river birch. Yeah, someone just put in, uh, was it, who put it in for the, Steve just put, uh, yeah. the two different names for him, so uh, I couldn't find Water Birch on the database. So David, David Nickel asked me, uh, what kind of horses do I have? He says he reined and trained Suffolk punches for reined and, reined and <coughs> trained, God, I'm using your teeth now, eh? Yeah, you must and be. <laughs> Suffolk punches for over 30 years. Yeah, beautiful horses, David, I have to say. Um, I have a combination of sports horses and thoroughbred. And, and one little cobby type. Just getting some sandpaper. Right, turn the speed down a bit. Don't need it going that fast. 800 will do. Dust extractor on again. So Lewis says he's trying to make it home in time for his premiere. You, you take your time there, Lewis, and don't be rushing. Definitely not. Wendy's just joined. Hi, Wendy. 
Good evening, Wendy. Wendy. Good evening, Wendy. Hi, Wendy. Matthew's put a question in. Has anyone in here had a go at turning a trombleur? <coughs> the only Ruby one has. I know about is, is Ruby, and she is in the chat, and it stands, I think it stands about four foot tall, the one that Ruby did. Is that the one she showed us on Mark's Live the other week? Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. an Very amazing impressive. piece of work, yeah. Absolutely amazing. So, Keeps Charles. In a glass container. So, Charles Taylor's asking you a question, Mark. What's the tool you use to hold the sandpaper? It's just a sanding paddle. Very easily made out of a piece of plywood. And some sticky back. Or Velcro, I think they are, aren't you? You can buy those yeah, ones. Yeah. Sort of, yeah. You could use the ones that you stick on your um, Simon Hope. Yeah, you can, actually, you, you can buy the pads from Simon Hope or you yeah. can... Um, Make them up yourself with uh, hard foam and Velcro. They're 240. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Let me get this right. Rob CP is saying he's going to be doing a one metre trombler in a few weeks. Yeah, I would absolutely love to see you do that, Rob. <laughs> without swearing, Rob. Who got to do it without <laughs> yeah, <right>. swearing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be watching that. This brave yeah. man saying that while Ruby's in the chat. Isn't he? He's a brave man saying it at all. <laughs> He's going to try and do someone alive too, he says. Well, I'm really wanting to see some of the string centre studies that he makes. Right, so... When you're doing a box like this, when you're doing any box really, while you've got either piece, the top or the bottom, secure in the chuck, finish it. Because it's easier to finish it now than it is after you've parted it off and got it fitted up. Plus, your sand and sealer is going to slightly swell fibers on your mortise and your tenon so get it get it how you want it now then when you f do your fit up in a minute when I do the lid it'll uh, fit better Quite wormy, this wood. Wormy, you would say? Yeah, it's got a few worm, worm trails in it. Mark, what are you making? From a Adrian. candle box. <coughs> not a, it's not a candle holder. It's not a tea light holder. It's a candle box. So this, this candle, which is in a glass, fits inside like that. Almost couldn't get it out then. <laughs> it's because the grain swollen with the end. Yeah, because uh, as I was saying, ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, what do you not like? Right, who's going to sing it then? I think it's going to be Brian. Not me. No, not me. Oh dear. It's Go on, Brian. Brian. Get that, get that har harpical harp. Yeah. <laughs> Yorkshire grit. <laughs> oh, I'm going to do my warm up exercises first. 
<laughs> Put someone out, I'll do something for a minute then. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that makes a far worse noise than that. <laughs> Right, turn the speed down. 300 will do. Work the grit in with the piece of paper that you put the grit on with. Now hands that feel pity can be soft as your face. With light brown Yorkshire gritty. Oh, like sung like an angel. Sung <laughs> like a professional. Yeah, yeah, but a professional, professional who's out of work. <laughs> I was just going to say exactly the same, Wayne. <laughs> Suddenly went very quiet. So, somebody wake Wayne yeah, up, he went to sleep there. He turned his sound I'm, off. <laughs> I'm down to 22 viewers. You've actually went up a little. Did I? Pity viewers. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Uh, you can't hear it because of the microphone, but it's still hissing. And while it's still hissing, that's the grit breaking down. Shh, Getting worry. finer and finer and finer. And it takes your finished surface up to approximately a thousand grit. Without the dust, without the need for the extractor on, without the need for a dust mask. Gets it lovely and super smooth. Work it for a couple of minutes. You've got all the time in the world. Don't need to rush this stage. Let the grit do the work. All right, that's started to stop hissing. So turn the speed up, 1,000, that'll do. And with a clean piece of paper, just buff in the grit. What I'm doing is melting the wax that's in the grit into the piece. Yorkshire grit is not a finish. It does leave what I would say is a semi-finished surface but it's not a finish it won't last keep moving the paper and you keep working it in until you get a nice clean piece of paper coming off the piece and speaking of grit wayne your competition finishes this wednesday don't it mate it does on my live on Wednesday, I will be doing the draw for the the blue vase with the, the gold leaf on. Wayne, why don't you, or Steve, or Brian, chuck the link for that live into the chat? Do you want me to do it, or are you going to do it, Wayne? Uh, you do it. My internet isn't fast enough. For, I'd, I'd be here one, all night trying to get that. It was, it was a Wednesday a night one. Fortnight. Yeah, it was yeah. a Wednesday night, a fortnight ago, yeah. The thumbnail is the actual vase, I think. Haven't you changed it, Wayne? Oh, I can't remember now, tell you the truth. I did look earlier today. So, just to explain to people what they've got to do to get entered into the draw, Wayne, if you don't right. mind. What, what they've got to do, the easiest thing to do is read the description in the video. It explains in the description in the video what you've got to do. So that was with the gold leaf two bands round, wasn't it? Is that the correct? That yeah. was a good, yeah, yeah. That's it. Here you go. So right, if you go to the video, you, you do have to subscribe to my channel um, to be eligible to enter. But um, if you go in, read the description on what you've got to do, uh, leave the comment. Um, I will respond. I've responded to every comment that's been in so far. I think. Uh, I will respond, and you will go into the draw that is being drawn on Wednesday evening. Oh no, for now, paper. Right. God, so I this is the new role. This is the link. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> so this is the link for Wayne's video. Um, 
Mm-hmm. And obviously you've got a grave. Mm-hmm. And they have to leave a comment, don't they? Would Jedi or something? Yep. Just re- it's in the description what they've got to do. Yep. There you go. So if you want a chance in for a chance to win the um, vase, vase, or what you want to call it. There's and also, also the, the, there's, uh, there's, 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 yeah, there's two prizes. One is the vase. That will be the one that's drawn first. And the second one is uh, a tin of Yorkshire Grit Original, a tin of Yorkshire Grit Microfine, and a Yorkshire Grit Black Hat. So, well worth winning. So, this is a bit of Hampshire Sheen, high gloss, food safe. All Martin's products are food safe now, aren't they? All these waxes are food safe now, aren't they? Are they? I believe they are. I think the high gloss and the microcrystalline are both food way food safe. Yeah, the, the, I, I think he, he has paid the expense to have them certificated. I'm annoyed about that camera. Yes, it's it's happening more often the overhead, which is a bit of a shame. Andy H has joined. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy, should I say? Not I, Andy. Don't press hard with the high gloss. Just let the paper touch the wood. Just buff it in. Douglas is asking you, Mark, did GP send you a link? Question mark, question mark. No. I haven't heard from JP today. Right. So finish off the bottom. <coughs> this is where we find out how stupid I've been. Right, Rob CP has said Stumpy Nubs just did a great video on food safe finishes. Take me bulk ouch. Now I could go that way. But that would put stress on the connection inside the box. So what I'm going to do, turn the flute over to myself, point in towards the headstock, and I'm pushing in towards the headstock. Whoops. That still, still pops off. Who are misses? Right. Let's try this. You didn't different. catch it, Mark. No, I didn't. I was busy getting out of the way. <laughs> try that again. Now, it wasn't overly dramatic because I didn't have the leaf whacked up to a huge speed. Unlike Mr. Oliver did the other day, or a couple of weeks ago now. Try that again. Now, let's have a look. Gentle cuts. Lord of the Bearded Woodworker present. He's taking a break from sanding segments. Oh, evening. Ruby's just said, run some tape around the joint between the two pieces. He hasn't done the top yet, Ruby. He's still just <laughs> at the bottom. <laughs> 
Come on, Ruby, pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> Rob CP has said teal stock support might help. And Sebastian Ossenhofer is. Is it Ossenhofer or Ossenhofer? Ossenhofer. Says, Ossenhofer says good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, Sebastian. Ossenhofer. Pop. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's close. We can hear us close. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. That's enough of that. <laughs> you got a Sandy, yeah? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> do I have to? Oh, yeah, no. yeah, come on. <laughs> of course you do. Y yes, yes, yes. We expect the museum finish here, come on. <laughs> I do think that's the first time I've ever had a piece come off the lathe in any of my lives. So. I'm, I'm really disappointed you know. didn't catch you, Mark. You let it hit the floor. Yeah. It's, uh, it's almost worse than spilling. What is more important? Drink. There's always room for extra members, Adrian. Always room. <laughs> we have that. Uh, 96 people watching now, Mark. Brilliant. Welcome along, everybody. Hope you enjoy it. Took, I took a jump there when people heard something jumped off the lathe. <laughs> Sanding sealer. Actually, we could go that one. There you go. See me wandering around my. Right, Florida the bearded wood woodworker has said, listening to Mark's stories, he must have been watching some of your early videos, Mark. Uh, he has taken a beating, and I can't blame him for jumping out of the way. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. They were um, holes in the bottom there, Mark. Yes. Yeah. That one, that one, that one, and that one. I'm glad Florida said that because that's reminding me to say something. Next week is going to be uh, very selfishly a very important live for myself. Um, I will change the camera so you guys can see me because I want to talk straight to you. Uh, he says change camera. Change it doesn't work, you know? um, so next week's going to be a charity live. Um, there's going to be a link in the description running across the screen for Sepsis Trust UK because I'm an ambassador for the Sepsis Trust because I was a survivor of sepsis and I was a long-term patient for ICU, they asked me if I would be a, a UK ambassador for them and I said yes. So I'm going to be raising money for them next week. Lots of fun and games. I'm not going to spoil the surprise of what's happening. Um, a few special guest earworms myself. Just going to do a little bit of a project. But it's also going to be kind of a 12-month recap on how far I've come from when I started proper wood turning when I moved into here uh, last year and sort of a, an update and a progression on how I am physically, mentally, and just basically a bit of a recap and to say thank you to everybody for all the support. There is going to be a giveaway 
there's going to be an auction and there's going to be the um, the fundraiser as well, which is through Just Giving. So I really hope everybody comes along next week. A lot of people who've been supporting me from the beginning are in the chat tonight. They know my story. Uh, but there are a lot of people who are in the chat who don't know the full story. So throughout the evening next week, I'm going to be going through it, telling you what happened, telling you why I talk like this, uh, telling you why the earworms look after me particularly well because of the problems I have, why I turn the way I do, why I can't feel anything down this side, um, and basically just give everyone an update and let's see if we can raise some money for a fantastic, fantastic charity. There isn't enough known about sepsis. It's not diagnosed easily because people don't know enough about it. So I'm just trying to raise not only funds for them, but also awareness for the public. Anyway, that's enough of me preaching. We'll deal more with that next week. Grand. So, so Florida... Yeah. Being a woodworker, put, I'll give to your cause. I love you, and I'm glad you are doing so good. Thank you, mate. Appreciate that. Uh, Eric Wingler's just come in. If I give you a hint and say it's going to be a ladies' night. Then you said you weren't going to say nothing. <laughs> no, that's the only hint I'm giving. It's going to be a ladies' night. I better get my frock out. You're not invited. <laughs> So you could have played along there and said we was all dressing up as women. So you could have I played just, along there. I didn't think that would go down well. Shay from BB Tunnelling, John. Evening, Shay. Right, right, that's a bit of Yorkshire grit. Don't have to sing this time because we've still got the lid to do. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> See if I crack the lid out in half an hour. I should be able to. Right, Adrian, Adrian's asking, Mark, do you have the small sepsis ID card that you can put in the right corner of the screen, in the, put in the corner of the screen on, on the night? If not, do you want a scanned version? Um, because I'm going through uh, just giving for the sepsis trust, on the night I will have all the sepsis uh marketing, if you like, uh, available on screen and in the links. So there'll be a, um, the scan, code. what do they call those square? Scan codes. There'll be one of those. There'll be a QR website. Code. QR code, that's it. Uh, there'll be everything. Don't worry. It's all being sorted. But thank you for the offer. Um, uh, she's the, just the come in. Already, hi, Shay. The live is already up waiting to go for next week and in the description for next week's there is the link for the just giving page uh, somebody has already donated um, so it is live it does work trying to raise 500 pounds being a bit ambitious but i know it's tough times but it's, I have two charities that are very, very dear to me. One is the autism charity because of my son is autistic. And obviously the sepsis because it affected my life so dramatically. Um, but I was lucky enough to survive it. And I really shouldn't have done. The surgeon who operated on me said he'd never seen anybody as sick as I was, and live. So, uh, I was very fortunate. I'm going to have to have words with him. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good fella. That's your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, to be fair, we still talk every two weeks. He emails me. Because he uses my case as a case study for other surgeons. Because basically he had to break all the rules to save my life. And by breaking the rules, he found out that he, it worked. I did 
I did, I did kind of surprise him four times or shock him because every time I got on his table, I died. Because that was payback then, weren't it, really? Because he shocked you. He did, literally. Once, once with the internal paddles. And whether you believe in it or not, I can remember every single instance where I died. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, good thing, because I know what's happening when it, when it happens the next time. I suppose the good thing is now you know what to expect when it's coming. Yeah. It's very relaxing. There's no fear, no pain, no anxiety. There's also no light at the end of a tunnel, no angels singing, and no harps playing. But, yeah, it's not something to be afraid of. It's going to happen to all of us. The only thing I'm not looking forward to is the four and a half hour wait to getting into the gates of the pearly gates. It's a big queue, right. you know, getting in there. Right, so that's the bottom done. Where are we? Uh, that one. Jean LH is here. Um, she's saying she's not late. She's been watching on TV. Evening, Jean. Right. And the candle goes in there like that. And it doesn't Very actually. Nice. Just half a millimeter above the, above the tenon. So I have to take that into account when I do the lid. Which is next? Right. Lid. Do this one quick. No rush, Mark. It's just just nine o'clock, just slightly after. It. Well, it's seven minutes yeah. after. And yeah. you've got and you've got ninety eight people watching. Oh, bloody hell! Astounding. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, right. So, firstly. Face off. Barry's Wood Creations has said he'd definitely be there next week, Mark, but he's sorry he has to go now. Uh, bite everybody. See you, See you Barry. Barry. Right, so that's that faced off. Now, what I want to do is I need to take a measurement. With my calipers. And Gina said she's been watching you for a year and she thinks you're brilliant. I think you need to speed up a bit if she's been watching this for a year. <laughs> She's <laughs> got on repeat. Thank you, Jean. That's very kind of you. Um, right. Florida bearded woodworker has said something that um, you don't usually do. Mark, get out of the habit of leading the key in the chuck. I don't usually do it. Didn't realise I had then. Right, here's the fun bit. So using a parting tool. Sebastian saying he was late and he, uh, he's got the watch on mute. Uh, he'll watch it again to get the full story. Well, the full story comes next week, so you didn't really miss it. He can't hear you, Mark. He's on mute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Can you, can you sign it to him? <laughs> Good. It's been years since I signed. I did you? 
I didn't know um, basic sign language because my son didn't speak until he was about seven or eight. And the only way we could communicate with him was through sign language. This is the only bit with boxes. You have to creep up on it. Adrian is saying, have any of you seen the repair shop and cringe when the woodworker uses the wood lathe? Um, can't see their yes. arms. Yeah, yes. yeah, I see a bit the other week of it. Good turn, Daly's in. Hi, Daly. Hi, Blair. Hi, Blair. Yeah, it's not a good idea to leave your uh, chucky in a chuck. <laughs> no, it's not. I've seen one go for a piece of reinforcing glass on a steel lathe. Um, Sebastian's is asking if the repair shop is a TV show. Yes, it is. It's on BBC One. Can I tell you after nine o'clock? Like nice Damn and blast. Too wide, mate. Well, the other thing you do want to do, Mark, is make a wood turner's fit, like um, like Brian did yesterday. <gasps> no, I don't. There it is. Sorry about those folks. How about I make the pencil mark where I can see it instead of on spotting? That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? Certainly would be helpful. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we can see that now. That's uh... Try it again. That's better. I do want a loose fit because this is going to be something I'm not going to have a, a finial or a handle. So you just need to be able to just lift the lid off nicely. Yeah. So I don't want, like Wayne says, a wood turner's fit that goes pop. I don't want a too loose fit. Uh, French fit, too loose, um, but I do want it to be able to just sit on there nicely. The other thing you've got to remember as well is not to make it to the correct size with the tool because you are going to sand it. Steve Flemings just said, I've learned a lot from all the turners on YouTube as I am new to turning and would just like to say thank you to everyone. You're welcome. So have I. I think we all have. 
Oh, yep. A lot, lot of talented people on YouTube. Oh, indeed, I learn a lot every day. Adrian said, uh, this is a reply to something that um, Florida was talking about, that they had a, a wood lathe in the tech room at school when he was a student, couldn't use it, it was missing the, the tool rest and banjo, he became a member of staff and found out where they could buy one. I don't think the schools actually concentrate on basic hand uh, carpentry skills nowadays, do they? Don't do it at uh, all. I tell in in the UK now, the the amount of um, certainly uni, union graduate leads that are going for sale all come from schools. Yeah. I mean, when I was at school, we had woodwork, metalwork, CDT, but departments were responsible for woodwork, etc. Have a technician. Yeah, they, I don't think they want a teacher now. It's not. Yeah, you know I mean, it's a shame, really. Oh, Joe Senior's in. Hi, Joe. Snuck in the hey, back there. Joe. Hey, Joe. Oh, hi, Joe. Finish the inside of that off. Bit of sentence later. <laughs> well said, Wendy. Wendy's learned everything she knows about turning a YouTube, and she's never turned anything. <laughs> Wendy, if you're ever down in Cornwall, you can have a go in my life. Pretty Yorkshire quit. And Ru Ruby is saying when she was a student, girls couldn't take a uh, shop. They call it a market workshop. It's, a shame. it's the same here. Joe's asking how much have we missed? Oh, God. Joe. You've missed yeah. you've missed an hour and seventeen minutes of it. Boys went there. Pretty much all of it. <laughs> now, one of my very good friends who I was in the army with, who was sadly no longer with us, was a um, design and tech teacher over in over in Teesside, in Middlesbrough and Teesside. And now, as he died, I think it was about four years ago, he sadly died. But they were still doing lots and lots of metal work and woodwork uh, at the school that he was at. That was four years ago. Yeah, but even if that's just basic things like uh, how to change a plug, how to change a fuse, and you know, just silly little things. How to put a screw? How to put? A, how to screw two bits of wood together correctly, and how to cut a piece of wood straight, and things. That's just basic skills, isn't it? That people should be taught, really. Well, I suppose it keeps us in work. But. <laughs> in fact, I think uh, I remember him tell, telling me one of the first things the students had to do was actually make a file. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I did in my the, in, the, in the metalwork part, of it, the, the first thing they had to do was make a file. Yeah. When I done my engineering apprenticeship, the first things we made was a square. Uh, a set square, a square, and um, a drill bit sizer. That was the first things we ever made. I've still got them, actually. And then I spent two and a half months learning how to sharpen drill bits. Sp sharpened every drill bit in the whole engineering department, I think, about six times. <laughs> 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 Wendy's put. I agree, so I would love to know. I would love to know how to cut wood straight. Table saw. There you go. <laughs> Table saw. <laughs> the amount of people I see trying to cut a bit of wood, and they've got a nice new saw, um, and they're trying rather than letting the saw do the work, they're trying to ram it through as quick as they can get it, and that's all over the place. It's, it just makes yeah. you chuckle.
Now we're double to do that. Just thought. Yeah, I made double one of those. Do that. Douglas engineering clamp. Yeah, I've still got my. I've still got mine when I did my. Um, when I did my city and girls. Chucky, I know. <laughs> Why did you go Sorry, back, yeah. Mark? I'm just asking. Because I want to shape the outside to match that. So I need to put the bottom on, shape the top, then turn around and finish the top off. Right, okay. Uh, so I want that one and that one. I think the trouble is with schools now, they're all more interested in computer and technology than they are in basic skills. I think that's the problem. I don't think I need the paper towel for this bit. That fits well enough. Just tighten it up just before it stop, just before it goes crack. Yeah, don't push it on the bottom, that's quite thin. Yeah, I know. Turn the speed of the lathe down before you turn it on. Stand clear. And then bring the speed up. All right, for the bit up by the top, you can use a spindle couch. It's just gone 20 past nine, Mark. Okay. Rob's, Rob CP's, but where I used to use, a bloke cut his thumb off with a handsaw. It's uh, pretty yeah, impressive. That's got, the, that's got the taste I'm doing. I went halfway through my finger with a handsaw. I um, was cutting a trying. I was trying to be smart. I was trying to take a mill and a half off a piece of fascia board, and the saw that was a new saw as well. The saw slipped in um, one drawer across my finger, took it down to the bone. Right, Ruby's saying the next two weeks of spring break over in Canada, and she's got eight students coming for lessons, four at a time. Nice. Now I can turn it around. With me a bit of paper. And Ruby saying when she was a teacher, she wouldn't allow calculators to be used. Too right, Ruby. They're allowed to now in their exams, aren't they? They have to, don't they? Yep. Part of the exam now. Maybe you can use a calculator properly. We had to use a slide rule. Not an abacus then. <laughs> I'll tell you what, no. I, I, abacus was, uh, abacuses are a hell of a lot better than using a slide rule. I've never used a slide rule, so I wouldn't know. Me neither. Cool. 
Jason Wheeler saying I still have I still have my sly ruler. A lot of people showing their age in the chat here. Slide rule yeah. and log tables. Oh my god. Oh the log tables. Uh, that was a nightmare. Yeah, you're absolutely what. right. Don't log know what logs. I don't know what we're I, I think I was talking about this the other night in, in one of the, the chats we we're having. And bloody logarithm tables. It was supposed to be faster to do things. The bloody book was about three thousand pages long. <laughs> it was just all it was just all numbers. Yep. So I'm just going to put a shape on the top here. Make the shape up as I go along. Florida bed woodwork. Has anyone seen wood work? Worth the effort. Oh, worth sound. The effort. Then in dust collection cart with the dust right wall mounted dust collection. 650 CFM. Bloody hell. And a cyclone. Really like it. Any thoughts? Nope, no thoughts at all. Haven't seen it. No. I think I'll go and have a look at it, though. 650 CFMs. That's a hell of an extraction. Radar, the wood turn is in high radar. The same for both for his Hoover went from 88 decibels to 56 decibels. That's good. Just be careful, just make sure you've got plenty of uh, extract uh, air circulation around the car, if not that overheat in the summertime. What did you use for the same proofing, Colin? Next door's garage. <laughs> 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 I like that. That's good, that is. <laughs> I must That's what you've done, isn't it, Steve? <laughs> well, not quite in their garage. No, not quite in their garage. But they did have their music on quite loud Saturday when I was using the extractor. <laughs> <laughs> that is that still on my side of the garden. That's just right in there going into their back garden. <laughs> Colin says he used eggshell foam. Yeah. I've actually heard of people using egg boxes. The old cardboard egg boxes. Yep. Yeah. People used to do that for soundproof in music studios. Oh, did they? All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, before we had fancy foams. <laughs> I don't know if that would work now with the old plastic cartons with it. Or plastic ones <laughs> wouldn't know it would bounce off the plastic. Cardboard kind of absorbs it a bit. Hey, you can still get cardboard ones, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah.
I must admit, I do like the record power ones where they they extract outside. They do cut the noise down a lot. Yeah, a little two-inch hose that cut it up. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, fifty mil pose. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you know, if I if you do notice a big difference, big big difference. Well, you can't hear my extraction going really. Not through the lives anyway. I can hear it in the workshop, but you can't really hear it on the live. I have the DX a thousand, which is just a single motor one. It doesn't have that on it. Yeah. Well, it's not. It's noisy, but it's in the shed next door to me, so I don't care. <laughs> can't hear it. Super Dust Duty, four inch cyclone. Yeah, I've got um Florida Beard Woodworker. I've got a four inch um cyclone on my extractor and they, they do really draw well. Really well. They do, I eh? really good at separating the, the stuff out. Yeah, I had I I bang my filters out every say two to three weeks and there's hardly anything on the filters. Just a light dust coat over the top of them, that's about it. No, it's the same. I, I did I did mine once when I seen yours. You I seen you installing yours. Yeah. So I, I jumped in and got one as well. They are Max well worth the money. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, for a hundred quid. For a hundred pounds, they are you know, I mean the thing I like about them is they're metal and they're in two halves, so if you do get a problem you can take it apart and clean it. Yep. Hundred mil as well, so you got no reduction on them, straight through. Yeah, Sebastian oh, yeah. said here, uh, he's found out that he needs a bigger lathe today. He can slow down to zero when using the ball gouge. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Too big a cut, possibly, though. Oh, Sebastian, sorry. Everybody needs a bigger lathe. No, I don't. Oh, says, says he with the VB36 sitting in the corner. <laughs> well, I'm just saying I don't need a big lathe. <laughs> no, you don't, need, you don't need one. You have one. <laughs> so the 386-6 record power, what's that? Is that an extractor, I take it? It must be, oh, yeah. yeah. Who is your show? Oh, Hi, who? Evening, Shug. And how's your birthday dear been today, Shug? You had a good time? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Oh, Happy birthday, dear Shug. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Shug. Oh, I see. That's one of the three moves. What's the extraction on that then? Three this one kilowatt. Hands. Three, four, three one kilowatt mm. motors. 162 litres a second. That'll draw. Bloody hell. You wouldn't want, you wouldn't want to be heating your workshop then. That would heat your workshop. The, <laughs> the, <laughs> the high pitch sound was Mark's dust extractor. That's what that was. Yeah, sorry. So the one I've got, I'm sure the one I've got is the 3865. Mine's only two motors. <coughs> right, so that was a bit of sand in sea there. Coming up 25 to 10, Mark. Yeah, no. Thank you. Actually, that second, that third motor only makes five more minutes. That make a lot of difference. Yorkshire grits. Right now, you can sing, Brian. I've already sung once. Oh, you, you want me to do it again? Yeah. Now, things <laughs> that feel pity can be soft as your face with light brown. Yorkshire gritty. Especially for Joe, that one. Because she's not here to sing it herself. Right, 
but I'm rushing the process a little bit with the lid. Because I'm conscious of the time. Take your time, Mark. Stop it, stop it, because I just heard a crack. Can you say, whoops, I heard something come off. Hmm. Did a bit come out? I think that was paper, but I oh. did hear it crack. Gave a little knock. But it might have just been settling on the paper. So I'll just stand to the side with this one. Want to see confidence? Absolutely none. Discretion <laughs> is a better part of valor. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's not my singing you're referring to, Steve Fleming. Says that's going to keep me awake now, Brian. Yeah, I think it was. Oh, no, Joe's in. Joe Garofalo's in. All right, Hi, Joe. Joe. Thanks for coming along. Okay. <laughs> I've never seen you leave a chucky in the in a chuck. <laughs> Only since Wayne mentioned it earlier. Yeah. Now we're all watching like a hook. Right. Oh. Ah. Oh. Like that. There we go. There we go. There you go, people. Very nice. Very nice, nice Mark. I like the shape. It's a very nice shape. I, I do like the shape, yep. Yeah. Take the lid off. There's a candle inside. Now, candles, candle holders, tea lights. Let's do the safety police thing, shall we? Don't <laughs> okay. make something out of wood and put a bare candle in it. It's got to be in a glass cup or a metal cup. Even the tea lights that you get from supermarkets need to be in a brass or metal tea light holder inside the wood. And also, common sense, don't go leaving it unattended. Right, so don't set it on and then go to bed with it still burning. Put it out, make sure it's out, Blah, blah, blah. Common sense, people. But there you go. One spotted something. Really not sure what. I'm spotted. not sure what they the mark. That's, um, that's, a, that's a strange bit of work because it's got spotting on one side, but not the other in it. It's not like all the way through. Yeah. No, that, that happens though, Steve. Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh, I've never, I've never seen that before. But it's got a nice smooth finish. It's got some wormholes in it. It came off the uh, scrap pile behind me. But that's there. Yeah, Lovely inside. comments in the chat. Bit of an integral handle. Marley Shench just joined. Hi, Marley. Hi, Marley. Long time no see, buddy. Evening, Marley. How are you? There you go. Completely finished on the bottom. No mortis. Hollow down inside. Bit of a rush at the end, but finished. There you go. I'm just, I'm just hoping there's none of them worms still alive over in that wood pile. No, I don't think so. Uh, you might not think so. That's not the point, Mark. It's not what you think. Well, that, yeah, but they weren't uh, dusty. Were the holes dusty then? No, not really. Stay, I could say. No, not dusty. No, but the thing is, they transfer onto other bits of wood. Just because you can't see them, just because they don't come out, doesn't mean they're still not there. 
bring you guys back if you're all right. Yep. yep. I bet they're dizzy if they aren't, all right, if they're still in there. <laughs> no, I meant in the wood pile, Steve. Yeah, oh, in the right. wood pile, yeah. I'm trying to start from one piece to another. Well, uh, I don't know. All I can do about it. Anyway, so that's the project for tonight. Something a bit Very different. Nice bit, of a, bit of a candle box. Um, thank you ever so much, everybody, for coming along. Remember, next week is a special, special one. So uh, looking forward to that. Special earworms. Special everything. Big night. Uh, where are we? Brian's got a premiere in five minutes, so I'll wrap up quick. Go along to Brian, and after Brian, Lewis Klondike Classman's got his premiere. And then tomorrow lunchtime is Circular Wood by Keith. Tomorrow night, I believe Beard 16 is going to try and do something. Um, Wednesday evening is Wayne, the wood turner. Don't miss that one. Are you doing your giveaway live, Wayne, or is it just... Yes, I am. No, it's yeah. going to be the, the giveaway is getting done live. Live giveaway, plus yeah. he'll turn something, I dare say. In about 10 minutes, like me. <laughs> and uh, Thursday lunchtime will be Brian at Hardwood Turning. I'll see you all there, because I'll probably be here, women. You will indeed, hopefully. Thursday night, I don't know who's doing Thursday night, because Scott's on nights. Um, so it might be Keith again. Friday lunchtime be Wayne. Friday evening, Ruben I will have a premiere. Nick will have a premiere. Stace will be live at 8 o'clock. And our very own Steve from SK Crafts will have his live with probably me and Wayne and special guest here, Worm, Robert Robertson from Australia. So we're looking forward All to that, Steve. All the way from mm -hmm, Definitely. And then we're into the weekend. Lots going on over the weekend, so people further on in the week will tell you what's going on in the weekend. Thank you to my earworms tonight for helping me out. Thank you, Mark. Thank you again to everybody for coming along. Thank you again for the support. Do appreciate it. Really do appreciate it. And that's it from me. I will see you all in uh, Brian's premiere in a few minutes. So, ta-la. That's it from me. No, no, no. Have a good Bye, week. Bye, guys.